In this episode of Mind Pump, the guys talk about a piece of equipment you're probably not using in the gym that can really help you improve your gains. Also, they discuss a toothpaste that can rebuild your teeth, as well as many other topics. In the second half of the episode, they answer four questions from Instagram, such as, hey, I'm having a hard time getting through my MAPS program. Is it the right program for me? And also, what is the difference between discipline and motivation? Discipline increases the amount of times you get motivated. So if you like motivation, one of the best ways to get that feeling of motivation to occur more often is to be disciplined. Finally, if you want short clips from the show, go to our YouTube channel, Mind Pump Clips, and subscribe. All right, here comes the show. One of the most valuable pieces of technology that can dramatically improve the success of your workouts is also easily one of the most underutilized. Here's the kicker. It's been around forever. You guys want to guess what it is? It's a piece of tech and it's been around forever? For, it's been around for a long time. Long time meaning like 50 plus years, not like It's been hundreds. a long time. Is this a trick question or it's, real like got, machinery? Okay, no, it's, it's real. Uh, the mirror. No, nah, it's not really tech. The clock. Well, I mean, it depends on how far. It, it could be considered tech hundreds of years ago. <laughs> Everything's tech. <laughs> yeah. The wheel. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's, Fire. No, I'm serious. <laughs> are, are, we, are we going 50 plus years, 100 plus years? No, no, no. no. How, how about uh, just let's go okay. in our careers. Right. It was used before that, but on our careers. Uh, okay. So, okay. That's not Here, that. I'll give you a clue. You guys have figured out. We trainers used them all the time when we were trainers. You always had one of these on you when you train clients. Clipboard. No. Uh, stopwatch. Thank you. Yeah. Stopwatch. Ah. So, you know, here's here's what's interesting. And, and I'm it. telling you, try this out. And I did it this morning while I was working out. So I've been trying to be consistent with rest periods, whether it's 30 seconds, a minute, three minutes. Uh -huh. And I'm also trying to stay present in my workout because I have a tendency to want to go on my phone, uh, you know, either text or read or do stuff like that. And I notice when I'm present in the workout, I have much better workouts. And I also notice when I can pay attention to the to the rest periods, I either A, if it's a long rest period, sometimes I'll rest too short. So if I if I know I'm doing a strength cycle, I'm doing three minutes, sometimes I'll probably rest two minutes or a minute and a half because I feel like I'm ready. Or especially if I'm doing a 30 second rest, I think I rested 30 seconds, it was more like a minute or a minute and a half. So I brought my stopwatch today and I said, I'm going to do 30 second rests in between sets. I'm going light. I'm trying to go for a pump. And that stopwatch of hit it, watch the time, 30 seconds, do my set, hit it, watch the time. Mm. I'm so present in the workout and my sets are consistently 30 seconds apart. And I can see the value of this for people who have trouble resting enough time. Like we've all had those clients where... It's like, no, we're going to rest two minutes in between sets. And they're like, what do I do in between? Do I do jumping jacks? Do I? <clears throat> it's like, no, no, you got to rest. Let your... Sounds like it's good for people with ADD. It's good for... Uh, like and a lot me. of people have this ADD. Used yeah. used to be, um, this used to be my favorite hack when I would get a client who was uh, had been training for an extended period of time, right? So years of experience already. And they're hiring me because they, they were in a plateau. <laughs> One of my favorite things to do is to just assess... Uh, we, we talk a lot about this and we just talked recently on a show about how people identify um, with like a, a, a type of, you know, modality, right? Yeah. So you're the, are you the circuit training person? Are you the CrossFit person? Are you the, you know, power lifter, the bodybuilder? And typically when you identify with that, that type of a person, the way you lift, you also tend to keep the rest periods like that all the time. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, and then my favorite thing to do to show them quick was quick results would be to take them on the opposite extreme. So if I got the, you know, soccer mom who loves all the circuit classes and there's like no rest periods, it's like nonstop lifting, like the body pump type of classes, the orange theories, I love to take her through a powerlifting cycle where I'm making her rest for three minutes. Yeah. And how hard is it for her? So hard. Yeah. If you didn't have a stopwatch, if she didn't have a stopwatch, yeah. would she even rest three minutes? No, no. And then you also have to you, you have to teach them how to like lift heavier because they're so used to lifting sure. light, light weight all the time. And then the, the opposite is true, right? I get somebody who is a power lifter and just loves to lift super heavy, but then now wants to change body composition, wants to get leaner, and you know has been training consistently for a long time. Again, assess their 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 training. Oh, look, they rest three minutes plus all the time. Put them on a thirty second rest period and be consistent with it and watch how their body changes. It's one Easy of, hack. It's one of the best uh, factors within programming that you can change. It's very simple. Mm -hmm. That changes the whole workout. Why? Well, uh, let me break it down. Number one, obviously changing rest periods changes how your body adapts, uh, changes the focus of the exercise, changes the feel. You know, you either get more strength, stamina, 
or you get more just grinding strength, you get a better pump, whatever, whatever, right? But besides that, shortening or lengthening rest periods also changes how you do the exercise and the amount of weight that you use. Oh, yeah. Like today, I was doing 30-second rests, and to give you guys some examples, so I go do incline barbell press, which if I'm doing my, my heavy work sets, I'm going anywhere between, I don't know, around 225 is probably what I'm going to stick to, low reps, right? Like five reps, something like that. Today, I'm like, I'm going to do 30-second rests in between. 135 is what I had to work with because mm -hmm. with that 30 second, after I did, like once I got to the fourth or fifth set, like 30 seconds was a good rest period and I was getting good, uh, you know, my reps weren't super high mm -hmm. at that particular point, right? So the shortening of the rest periods forced me to go lighter, forced me to feel the muscle, forced me to focus on the pump. The long rest periods is the opposite. All of a sudden, with the, like those clients that you're talking about, Adam, the ones that just are so used to circuits, so used to hit training, when I'd have them rest longer, they couldn't. They had to readjust the weight yeah. because they had to use more. I weight. mean, I'd, I'd say that that's the biggest challenge of this tip, and I think why so many people don't do it is because it it also messes with their 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 weight. Yeah, like what they choose to put on the bar, right? And what it, okay, if I and we're, again we're just we're picking on a specific avatar, but there's plenty of people that fit in these categories. So you know, the soccer mom. <clears throat> One of the greatest challenges, aside from getting her to rest longer, would be also to convince her she can do more. Yes, mm -hmm. you can do more. I promise you. I'm watching your form. I'm watching how you're moving this way. We can do so. That's also that part, and vice versa. The meathead guy who loves, you know, bench pressing 275 plus, and now all of a sudden he's got to put 135 on the bar. Yeah. It's a mental fuck on both sides, and so it's not just oh, let's switch your rest periods because what I would see when you would tell someone that is they do it and they never stick with it because no. it messes with their ego because they're so used to training also a weight a certain way that they would they would abandon the tip. So it, you have to you have to stick with it. It's phenomenal. Literally, in a stop, I bought one on Amazon for like less than 10 bucks. I mean, they're cheap. And I got it in the mail yesterday. And so I brought it to work. And literally, it's what you do. You say, okay, uh, today's workout, I'm going to go for 60-second uh, rest in between sets. Which, yeah. by the way, 30 to 60 seconds is faster than you think. Mm -hmm. So I go, okay, I'm going to do, for me, it was 30 seconds. So I'm, I said, okay, I'm going to do 30 second rest. And I literally hit the stopwatch when it was time to rest, hit it when it was 30, and did my set. If I didn't do that, and, and I'm feeling how I'm feeling, like throughout the workout, if I didn't do that, it would have easily <clears throat> stretched to 60 and 90 seconds without me realizing it. Because time, part of, part of the thing with time and being accurate with time is we perceive it differently. The more tired you are or I get distracted, time moves faster or slower. Look, you, uh, I think Einstein has a famous quote where he says, you know, uh, th about the theory of rel relativity. He made a joke and he said, yeah, you want to see how fast time goes, sit next to a beautiful woman and have a conversation with her mm -hmm. and time flies by, right? Mm -hmm. Or do something that you hate and you can see how slow time. So our perception of time gets very easily distorted. So whatever you, time period of rest you want to set, bring it, stop, watch your workout, mm. set it, do your thing, set it, do your thing, and stay consistent with the workout. And tell me at the end of the workout that you don't feel a difference. Did Einstein yeah. really say that about a hot chick? He did. He didn't say hot chick, though. He <laughs> said a beautiful woman or something like that. I didn't even yeah, know that. Maybe I've Doug could find that. He was actually pretty funny. Like, he I never heard that. Guy. I've never heard that before. Can we, you uh, know, this is also, sorry, Justin, cut no, you yeah, off there. I won't just let you guys talk. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Keep going. Is, yeah. Remember when we talked off air? We were going to do that one day. <laughs> <laughs> like, is this the day you guys are just going to try and yeah, like, single me out and be like, hey, see you later. <laughs> no, we got no, this again. An hour later, yeah. Justin hasn't got worded. <laughs> no, I, I, I just wanted to finish on or to close the, the loop on what Sal is saying because you, you've you heard me on the podcast before talk. Well, I've got a lot of flack for the, 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 group, the, the group X thing, which should die. The second thing I got a lot of flack for was uh, workout partners. Terrible to have a workout partner. And a lot of people disagree with that for the motivation and, and the spot and all this bullshit mm -hmm. uh, consistency to get there. But this is one of the reasons why I didn't like a workout partner and why I think they can be they can be detrimental to a lot of people is because when you have somebody else, it's really difficult to do the time thing. Mm -hmm. Have you ever tried to do a time thing with them? You can't. The only way three, it works- You're going to do three-minute rest. That's, that's right. The and, and the only way it works is if you're both like on the in the same rest period in that time, that phase of your training during that month or yeah. whatever like that, and it, and, it, and you Maybe don't talk, training, and you don't talk, it. and you just yeah. take turns, yeah. and then that matches the time. Yeah. It's like, but like, who does that? Anybody yeah. who works out with someone bullshits in between, gets distracted, and it's like, you're not sticking to your programming that way, which is, an, this is a, another one of the main reasons why- I never liked to work out partners because I did manipulate this 
and I do know what a big difference it makes when you're consistent with it and you stick yeah. to it. Yeah, I haven't messed. So the stop clock, I mean, that makes perfect sense for rest periods. Uh, the cool part is now that they have those gym digital clocks that have the second hand. So oh. I, I tend to use that for rest periods, but also too, if you have one, you know, available to to look and refer to that when you're doing isometric holds, I'll oh, do yeah. 15 to 30 second holds and like just re real dialed in on that instead of just trying to count it in my head, but totally changes the, the entire feel of the workout. Yeah. And, and then the other part of it, which uh, this may sound weird to some people until you try it and then you'll be like, oh, okay, I can see a difference is it keeps you in the workout. Yeah, yeah. It keeps you present. Now, one of the things I love about strength training is it's the most present form of, one of the most present forms of exercise that you could possibly do when you're doing the exercise. So when you're doing a set with strength training, you got to be very, you got to be there, especially if you're going heavy. Unlike right. other forms of exercise where if you're just doing the same thing over and over, you're running on a treadmill or on an elliptical and you can kind of get lost in your thoughts because it's repetitive. With strength training, it's harder to do, especially if you lift heavy. So I love that about it. But the, the part where it gets screwed up is in, the, in between the sets. Mm -hmm. This is where we start to go off and we're not present. And with the invent of, uh, of smartphones, that really messes the whole thing up. And I never really thought about it because uh, I, I have my smartphone. I'm on there. I'm, I'm working. I'm doing stuff in between. I'm reading. Never really thought about it until yeah. not that long ago. I thought, man, I remember, oh, you know what it was? I was watching old bodybuilding videos. And I, as I'm watching them, I realized something like there, there's no music in the gym when they're working out. Like back in the day when Arnold used to work out in the seventies, mm -hmm. they didn't play music. That yeah, wasn't until like yeah, a little hear, later. It's like the nineties. Yeah. You hear, they, like, the they, All you hear was, <laughs> you, yeah. <sighs> yeah, they're just, people are just, they're I'm, just, I'm good with music. They're just, <laughs> they're just, I'm not saying I'm against music, Yeah, but they're just training. I remember thinking like, man, they had nothing but the workout like how present they must have had to be. And yeah, as I'm watching the video, focused, and as yeah. I'm watching the, cause I'm watching in the background, cause I love old exercise equipment. So I'd pause the video and I'm looking at it. I'm like, man, look at all that old equipment. And I'm like, nobody's talking to each other. Yeah. They're all just trained. They're all super present. I'm like, you know, I used to do that when I'd work out. It, there wasn't anything for me to focus on other than my workout. Um, so let me try that. So I did it where, with my phone where I, I put it in my pocket and I'm like, I'm not touching it made a huge difference. Stopwatch does it to another level because I'm literally there. Either I'm focused on the rest or I'm focused on yeah. the lift. And I mean, that 45 minute to hour workout is like so present and you're, and that's going to reflect on your, on the psychology around the workouts and how you feel. Oh boy, we're back. Here's the giveaway for today. Maps Powerlift. This is a power lifter program. Get you strong on the bench press, the deadlift and the squat, and you can get it for free. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop this video, subscribe to this channel, turn on notifications, do all of those things. If we like your comment, we'll notify you in the comment section that you won free access to Math Powerlift. Also, we got a sale going on right now that ends in 48 hours, two days left for the following sale. Skinny Guy Bundle, 50% off. Look at all those amazing programs, half off. And the Fit Mom Bundle, that's also 50% off. Again, remember, they're all ending in 20, excuse me, in 48 hours. So take advantage right now. If you want to learn more or sign up, click on the link at the top of the description below to get the discount and to get signed up. All right, here comes the show. I, I wish they still made iPods. I used to have this one that was just loaded with like workout songs. Mm. And so it was like, there was no distraction of the phone to kind of interrupt that. And then you had like your hood and everything. Like you go in like on yes. those heavy days and you just were just all about business. And I haven't got back to that in a long time, but that was like the biggest hack for me was like making sure like I had that all loaded up and it was ready to go. And there was nothing else that was going to interrupt Dude. it. Did they get rid of iPods completely or they don't have like the little show, an MP3 player. The little show, do they? You can get by an MP3 itself. Player. Like yeah. not on Amazon. That's old, like new, like no, new? like a new, like they're cheap. Just get, I know because that's what I did. I looked online because that's, that's what I was the move. Do. I feel like that's the hack. Now the reason why I didn't do it is because I have a pregnant wife and a baby. And I'm like, oh, if something happens, you know, I know me. I'm gonna you know, start the, like that stuff is making a comeback right now, right? So I just saw our friend uh, Max Lugavere actually uh, post. He I think he's either partnered with or maybe he was just doing a shout out. I don't know if he was if he's officially partnered, but 
there's a like these uh, these iPads or notes that you, he 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 has this digital notepad that just does that that just does that has no apps. I no think no, that's the future. Uh, I do yeah. too. I think I think more, and more we, we're too distracted. Yeah, I think more and more people are recognizing that they are. And yes, for convenience, it's nice to have everything on your phone. But then for distraction, it's not. No, it's not. Yeah. Look how cheap it is. Nineteen bucks, you could get one. No way. Yeah. Dude, now I'm those are all old. Now, now those are all old though, Sal. Right? No, they're those not. Are, they're not iPods. Are those used, Doug, or brand new? No, brand new. They're just they're just empty. Yeah, because like the new headphones is like how good luck connecting them. Yeah, you know? like in, unless they have like ports for the new. Now, now what sucks about this though is so like I wonder if you could, if they do they make any that like have like Spotify built into them to where I because yes oh they do yeah so you could get on and 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 have uh, streaming music. Oh, that's oh, I'm for sure getting one. Now. Yeah, that's yeah. a lot. I think the really cheap ones are just music you upload. Yeah, which you, that would be a pain in the ass for me because I don't even yeah. have I don't even have any. Of that I don't even stuff, know how so. to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. How do you I never, do this? You never did Napster, dude. Or any Napster, of stuff? it was huge. Okay, so I never college did. campus. We would spend in between every class. We'd go in some one of my friends' like uh, common areas, and we had a computer set up, and every single guy would just think of like bands and download. We got up to thousands. It was like over 5,000 bands, just their entire catalog. Just stealing. Just stealing. Yes. <laughs> Putting it on little. <laughs> I mean, we did all that. So we uh, all but we all lost it now. It's like, you know, irrelevant now. You know, dude, My son knows dude. how to get to all those sites. Because uh, now yeah. they do that with movies. Yeah, they do it with movies. He's like, time. dude, he goes, uh, I'm like, oh, movies out. Let's go to the movies. He's we'll like, well, we can watch it online. Movies? I'm like, huh? Yeah, and he says that the first version is always someone sucks. recording it. It sucks. But then he says, very quickly, within a week, uh, they have a digital version. It's still degraded. Wow. It's the, I, have I you least tried it? It, Yes, I have. I have. Okay. And in fact, when we first started this podcast, I think it was you who got one of us on trying to do that. And I remember like going home and like all excited. And then we watched it. Was it the fire stick or something? Yeah, some bullshit. Yeah, yeah those too? stuff that my sister and them are all into that. I'm like, dude, that's I so it's like unprotected. I'm one, sex, those, guys, though, you know I'm one mean, of those guys who pays the, viruses, the yeah. extra amount of money for, for your sure. TV to be like the the best, right? Like you, you could go get my same TV, same size, same brand yeah. even for half the price, but I'm paying for I want the purest quality same like, year i don't give a shit i'll pay for yeah, it yeah yeah so i thought you know but the stealing you guys just reminded me so there wasn't even in my notes to talk about it but i watched this documentary last night and i i can't get the name it's a netflix documentary that's trending right now doug so maybe you can help me or andrew can help me oh he found the quote from einstein right now uh also oh before. Well, yeah what is it, it says uh, sit with a pretty girl for an hour and something like it feels like it feels like a minute. Sit on a hot stove for a minute, and it feels like an hour. <laughs> that's a funny. That's how we explain that's relativity. Fun, <laughs> that's, that's so great. All right, so, so this documentary. So yeah, so this documentary is about these two kids that basically, and and they were the ones that like really started. So everyone knows uh, now, and I, I, I'm sure that there it's because of these two kids. Um, like about posting online, like when you're leaving your house for a week or doing stuff like that, like how stupid mm. that is. Oh, yeah, yeah, the right? thieves, they yeah. are the ones that made this popular and they actually did this to all famous people first. So this was a really popular, this happened in Hollywood. What There's, do you mean they did this first? They, they, they were, they were like, okay, this was before, this was MySpace. Okay. MySpace hit the scene, but like in beginning of Facebook era, Paris Hilton's the, I forget all the other, all the people they hit, they hit Paris Hilton's house. Like eighteen times, broke into what? it. Yes, and the, and she had so much shit in her room, so much money in her purses and shit laying around that they were smart. They didn't like rob like a million dollars worth of jewelry out of their safe. They would just take all this like couple the thousand dollar stuff. Yeah, shit they, that she wouldn't even realize. Wouldn't even realize and wouldn't even report. Wow. And they kept coming back and kept coming back. She's and like, all I, they would all they would do is they'd watch these celebrities. She's so stupid. Like, Ew. <laughs> these, Where's my bag? Yeah. They would they would watch these celebrities when they would and, and they started with like reality to, star celebrities and they worked their way up to like A list celebrities and they would wait until they were you know posting about being in Miami for the week or like that. <laughs> they would go to their house and then and they, here's the crazy part they wouldn't even break in they would just they would do this to so many houses in this rich neighborhood that so so many people would leave their their doors unlocked a slider open just a key in. a key under the mat yeah. Just walk in. They got wow, away with this for dude. okay, thirteen years. What's it called? The, wow. the bling ring. Bling ring. Yes, bling ring. Yeah, Fascinating like, story. I thought I had seven thousand dollars. <laughs> they hot. were they were getting away for this so for hot. for thirteen years. This would never work Bro, in my dad's they, house. They were hey, listen. They <laughs> were, hey, my dad. Literally, my dad would be like, "There was seven dimes here." Yeah. Well, yeah, they were yeah. still they were stealing from the rich. That's why they got why away with six, it. Six, six dimes, one dime is missing. Where'd it go? They they did this. This they started this in high school. 
They were doing this in high school. These these kids it's were doing smart this. though. Nickel this and dime their way. They would go down the neighborhood. One the the girl would hang. He would drive, and they'd go down like a you know Hollywood Hills. Yeah, and they would drive along all these freaking sick cars and you know, a Porsches, BMW, and and they, she would just reach her hand out and, and just keep trying a door handle until finally a door handle would open. And they would just go in there, rifle through all the stuff, steal whatever's in the glove box, and then go. I mean, they were doing this forever. Man. Eventually, hit a Porsche that had left the keys in there. She steals the Porsche. They go had the smarts to go and put like the dealer plates when you buy a new car yeah. on there. They drove it to high school all year. All year? <laughs> Rolled up to with their fucking stolen Porsche to high school every day with their dealer plates wow, on. The balls. Bro, it's a crazy. Did they get caught? Obviously. I so I actually don't remember how the ending. I don't know what I was doing. Why I don't remember how that got right. Oh no, it's a series. That's why I didn't finish it. I think I'm on like the second episode or third episode right now of it, and it's super fascinating that Dang. these kids got away with this. Have for you seen so uh, long? I don't know what country it's in, because this wouldn't fly here, but it was somewhere where there's a lot of theft, and especially well. Wealthy people will get like robbed or whatever. Where they in, they literally installed flamethrowers <laughs> in the car. Where if someone's trying what? To, yeah, flamethrowers. Yeah, like somebody's trying to break in or burn your whole you. car down. No, you push a button and yeah. flames come out the bottom and will just just flame someone up. <laughs> Doug, look it up. <laughs> Are you talking? I about swear me? to God, <laughs> it's not. It's not in like. It's boom, not like boom. in a. Ah, you I think watch, it's you in watch a, too many superhero movies, bro. That's had to come no, from one of your no, no, superheroes. No, no. It's not kryptonite. <laughs> it's fire. We know what fire is. No, this is. Um, it's it's like an emerging economy. So it's like in a country where you've got some really rich people, but then there's lots of potential crime and stuff. Like I don't a remember Puerto what Rico country, or something like that. Yeah, or, I don't remember what country it was, but it, yeah. and it was perfectly legal that like you could do this. It's like South Africa is a place. Is it? Did yeah, you find I'm, it? Yeah, I'm gonna pull it up here. Oh yeah, no, this is real, bro. Now as I watch this, I'm like, huh? <laughs> I wouldn't mind having the such ultimate shit. deterrent, right? Yeah, Look yeah. at this. So this Downtown actually happened LA. here, right? Somebody. Is this an actual video of someone trying to break into his car? Uh, I or believe just, I believe so. Or that or demoing it, right? This That's reminds fine. me of that one with the bike uh, video, the guy that, I love that, that sets up anybody stealing his bike and like puts like an ejection seat See? on it, launches them. It's for South Africa and it's to combat carjacking. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> bro! <laughs> Shit! That's Whoa. no joke. Yeah, I told you. What? Like He's like, what? He's like, like look you're at gonna my be a product. shish kebab by the time. Yeah, dude. I mean, and I because I, I, I think carjacking there was such a big problem. Wow, people dude. were getting killed, getting their stuff stolen. <laughs> so it's in it's it's look it's right there. So it looks like you're turning your car off. Bro, that's a problem though. What if like yeah, dude, well, I, I just did this some this morning. Mess with I went car. to go grab. I went. I my, left my wallet in my other car. Right. I go to grab the door handle and it was it was locked. And what did you like fucking light myself? No, on no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, you have to be in the car and you have to turn it on. Oh, this is for carjacking. Why oh, someone's jacking. in the car? Yes, it's carjacking. So people, this was a big problem where people are in their car. They pull up to their house. Yeah. Someone's waiting. Then they sneak up with a gun uh, and either get you out of your car, rob you, kill oh, you, wow. kidnap you, or whatever. So when you're in your car, you it looks like you're turning your car on. There's like a, uh, it looks like there's a switch there, and then it just fucking. See, I like those fire. armored oh. vehicles for that. You show me a bunch of those, uh, the I bulletproof know. windows and, and tires and rims and all that. And then they have like this, like almost like a Gatling gun on did the top. Did we show that him that out. new? Did I show you that SUV? They did. Yeah, I think it's sick. things like yeah, a little mini so tank, heavy, though, right? It's like 400 kilo. Yeah, but it's got a, it's got like a V12 thousand horsepower engine in it. Yeah, but, uh, it's still moving. See? He's like, give me your, <laughs> give me your money. <laughs> you're on fire. I mean, at one point, do people start buying stuff? Like this downtown LA, you know. It's, well, and I it's, wonder, it's I wonder if this that is getting there is that more feasible than just having bulletproof windows? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. I feel like bulletproof, bull, bulletproof windows would solve the same problem. It would, except you don't get to kill the guy who's trying to. <laughs> yeah, you don't get to set him on fire. And, uh, like if I'm if I got my kids in the car and I'm in there and some dude pulls a gun, I would rather light him on fire. Oh, you know, not so me. I would waver that bulletproof. That's crazy, bro. If you actually because if that guy's on fire, he could be fired away. You're right. I'd have both. Oh, you can't shoot me, yeah, and you're on fire. Yeah, yeah, okay, oh. that's true. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, now now your now your defense. The, the, the funny part is the video is showing us in this like 1980s BMW oh, yeah. that you're protecting. I know. So you fucking the, your your defense mechanism is more expensive than your car. I know. Yeah, hey, exactly. Did you, did you, along those lines, Justin, you talked about those guys that made those videos with bikes. Yeah. Uh huh. There was one where the bike seat. If you sat on it, there was like a, a like a small diameter pipe that would come through the seat. So you'd sit Ooh. on it. Boop. <laughs> so this guy, he put this bike out and then videotaped from from far away. Yeah. People trying to steal his bike. 
So they look around, and you can see these, these fuckers are looking around like, oh. And then they jump on the bike, they sit on the seat, Woo! and then it plays this music. <laughs> 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 they get impaled. I love it, dude. Oh, it's, it's, uh, that's, hey, you, that's good stuff. Hey, that's I'm, good stuff. I'm I'm excited. Well, I'm excited and also frustrated at the same time. Uh, that we have. It's been a while. I feel like since we have partnered with a brand that typically what happens, right? One guy brings a brand that he really likes. Oh, this is amazing, right? And all it takes is at least one other guy to go like, oh yeah, I like it too. That's really cool for us to go like, okay, this is cool. This is a, this is a potential partnership. Someone that'd be cool to introduce yeah. to the audience, right? It's not that often that we get a brand that we partner with that everybody is like, n like all about it, not yeah. just all about it, but, but like we're fighting over the stuff all the time. Yeah. So I'm, I'm getting the scraps. Yeah. Well, I had that. We, we just, we just recently signed with creatures of habit, the, the oatmeal product, which we Pro all, protagonist. Yeah. All yeah. of us, which by the way, I think he's changing that really soon here. I think the name is going to be changed like in the next month or so. So it, this he, is high protein, uh, oatmeal with omega three fatty acids, vitamin D probiotic. uh, probiotics in there. Yeah. Tastes good. So, and, I just, you know, I mean, I, I, I brought it to guys going like, okay, I love this. I think they're going to like it. Everybody, oh, yeah, I like it. But then you can't even cut. We had Case already here that was sent here is gone. Yeah, because one of you know? fuckers takes them home. It's no. Home. You didn't take it home? No. I actually, uh -huh. so I'm bringing more from my house. So I had them. So I have a case now being shipped to my house. I have a, a case being shipped here. We went through all the case here. What you see me bringing is mine. Like you don't oh, get so you're it's so always nice. the quiet one, dude. It's probably Dylan. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? The new he guy. just sits there. Like, the hey, no, guys. you know what happened yesterday? I go, I go, talking about shrink. No, 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 no I go back Dylan? there before we start the podcast and I see a box of the of the protagonist. I'm like, oh good. There's there's some oatmeal. I'll have that right after the podcast. Then we're doing our podcast and stuff. It's and then empty. I look at Doug and he's got like a mug. And he's eating something out of it. And I'm like, son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> I go back there, it's gone. Yeah. I'm like, did you eat it, Doug? I yeah. Yes, I out. did. Early bird. <laughs> have Just you guys had all the flavors yet, or no? Are there some of the flavors? I've you tried. Have? I've the, had maybe three or four. I've tried the banana. What is it? Banana something. Banana chocolate. Peanut butter, right? That's, vanilla. The maple is good. I've tried them all. Yeah. yeah I, all apple good. cinnamon is my favorite. Apple I like cinnamon's good. Yeah. Too. Apple, apple cinnamon is really favorite. good. The maple one's one. The peanut butter banana's one. The blueberry now, is doing, probably my second. You're favorite. You're just doing water, right? That's it. Yeah. I go. Yeah, uh, you don't need anything else. Macadamia nut milk or almond milk. So unbelievable. So do you heat that first? What do you mean you heat it first? You're mixing with the macadamia nut milk. Yeah. So are you heating the milk? Yeah, I put it in there and I microwave it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, okay. No. <laughs> we get Reddit cookbook. Yeah. <laughs> For Adam. Jeez. Step one. You're at page one, how to make ice cubes. Yeah. Um, no, it's uh, I just pour mm. it in there and warm it up, and it's really good with almond milk. Oh, and you pour it in, you warm it all together. All of it, yeah. Yeah, that's not how you do oatmeal. I don't know why. It's weird. It comes out that. the same, Adam. I don't think so. Yeah, it does. Mm. Yeah, I don't comes think out so. exactly the same. No, I don't think it's, so, Doug. I'm not sure if yeah, order matters that much. Thank you for no. Uh, actually, you thought he was backing you up, but in yeah. fact, he just he didn't listen to the whole thing. Well, there. it's instant oatmeal, right? <laughs> it's considered instant. Oatmeal. It is. The, it is. the 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 one thing I did. So, oh, is anybody making oatmeal cookies with it? Yeah, we made muffins out of it. You did? Yeah, we made muffins out of it. You already did. Mm -hmm. Bomb. Okay. Bomb. I want to do the cookies. I think Savannah's doing that. She actually. said she was going to. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Well, that's try that. What I want to try. Mm -hmm. Really, really bad. All right. Yeah. Uh, some yeah. uh, some bad news. What? Did you guys see that there was a report came out of the UK that unexpected deaths, um, they're trying to figure out why sudden unexpected deaths are on the rise? What kind of deaths? Um, Heart related? Unexpected. <laughs> what, what does that mean? Yeah, does that include uh, car accidents? What does yeah, that include? No, I think are we supposed to figure this out? No, I think cause. it's like heart attack, blood clot, mm. sudden death. Mm. Like, oh, I see what you're Now, doing. hold on. No, no, everybody calm down. I'm, I'm calm. Yes. So there's, so there's, there's a lot of controversy around it, right? Because right. people, some people are like, aha, it's the long-term effects of the vaccines you forced everybody. Mm. But what we don't have, and I want to be always cautious with this kind of stuff. First off, unexpected deaths are not a huge number. It is higher, but it's still not a huge number But in comparison. But it's still it's 10% higher. But still, you want to be like, what's going on? There's a few likely culprits. One is during the pandemic, when things were shut down, a lot of people didn't get regular medical care who don't have great health. Huh. So there's lots of I deaths that. that are prevented because they go to the doctor and the doctor's like, oh crap, we got to put you on blood thinners. Oh shit, you need yeah. blood yeah. pressure medication or whatever. And that didn't happen. 
Nobody went to the doctor. Yeah, nobody was making appointments unless it was like, you know, like I absolutely have to go to the hospital. That's right. Yeah. So nobody was going. So that's number one. The second potential likely culprit is obesity rose at twice the rate of normal during that period oh. of time. Mm. Lots of stress the, eating. Which is probably the biggest reason. Yeah, so lots of stress eating, lots of unhealthy habits. Um, and then combine that with mental health went terrible. Depression increased. Yeah. Um, so general health was worse and got worse faster during the pandemic than before. Plus not seeing doctors. And then you could, you could potentially add in, were there some maybe unintended uh, or unforeseen side yeah. effects of some of these vaccines? Who knows? But they're gonna, there's going to be more yeah, data. One but of there's, many factors going into it. Yeah. Yeah. But, but there's a lot of, there's, they're looking into it and it's actually be, becoming mainstream news over there in the UK. Um, I'm interested in seeing what that looks like in other places. Yeah. If we're seeing similar, you know, trends here in, in, in the US. Hey, isn't it gonna be so hard though to like pinpoint that this Correct. Thing? It's gonna be like impossible. And there's I mean, there's other things too. Like I I you know what I think what had to been like had to been so bad for people was was it last year? The last year or year before when we had all those crazy fires? Like you imagine breathing that in for like three, four months. Like you wanna know something crazy? So yeah. I thought about that. So you remember Chern when Chernobyl happened? Yeah. yeah. Well, we don't remember because we were whatever. But when Chernobyl happened, there's this big toxic radioactive cloud that kind of circled the globe. They estimate that there was something like I don't remember what number it was, but it was pretty big. There was a certain percentage more cancer uh, cancers that happened because of that right. worldwide. Right. So you got to you got to think, you know, with the smoke and stuff that we've now had, uh, you know, that one year where it was just crazy. That's got to have some effects on people who are susceptible. It's got to be. Term, right? It's got to be. Yeah. Yeah. No. I, I mean, that. It, it, and you're talking. We were seeing it here in the Bay Area, and if you were living up towards up north, I mean, it was apocalyptic. Yeah. Ap apocalyptic. Told you not to go outside and stuff like that, but you're breathing that in, you know, all day, every day for weeks and months for a while. I mean, are we ever going to be able to analyze it like that, though? I, I, yeah, with, with how like like politicized and pol it still no, is to talk no, about. I, nope, I don't think so. I had this discussion it, with like my, like we're, yeah, it's like how are we ever going to get real scientists to even go through all the data and really give us real numbers? Well, first off, you'd have to separate everything, and yeah. you can't, and you which can't. Is mean, you which can't. is mean, which is at, at best you're making a good guess. That's all you're doing, right? And then number two, um, that's why the it, answer is freedom. The answer is to just allow people to do what they yes, want to do. Yes, but now that's really what it is. The second part, and this is the part I had this conversation with my family was. Um, if uh, if indeed they find out, hey crap, there there are some long term effects uh, for from these vaccines for some people, <clears throat> and it's causing this this and this, would they even want to admit it? Because they went through a whole period of massive coercion, people right. getting forced to do this. Right? Could you imagine if they came out and admitted? Not to say that this is true or not, but let's say it was, and they came out and said it. That would cause massive social upheaval. <laughs> So it would almost be like a national security issue where they'd say, hey, we can't let this out yeah. because it's going to cause some crazy worldwide problems. So I don't think we'll ever get answers on some of that stuff. Well, you know? yeah, it's a lot easier to just shuffle it off. Since you opened the door for controversial stuff, oh, cool. uh, did you send over the article that I sent that came out about the uh, gays against grooming? Oh, I did. And, that's that crazy. They, and they shut them down on PayPal and shut them down on like I think Cash App. Or so something. this was a page a that this is a page that's run by um, people from the LGBT community, so uh, gays, lesbians, bisexual, and uh, trans individuals. And they're the whole page is about the they're against the sexualization of children. They're against um, some stuff that they're seeing that's out there right now. Like well, a good example because is because they're using their community to justify what's going on. That's what they say, right? Yeah. That's what their point is. Like, <clears throat> and they're and, growing fast. Yes, like an example would be like those these drag shows that parents are bringing their kids to, which and they're obviously sexualized. Some of them even have topless dancers. Or this teacher, by the way, the teachers in Canada, not in Texas. You said Texas on the episode. Uh, yeah. The teacher who comes to school Pissed to teach Texas, sorry. with massive prosthetic boobs with huge nipples and a tiny sheer You know what? I was, so I'm glad you brought that. And didn't that. get fired or anything for it. Right? I'm glad you brought that back up because I, I, I don't know how, and this is why I'm so skeptical even of what we read and see like in, in media, is do you think it's possible that could be a massive troll on his part? Like, like maybe he's actually more on the side on your side and he's actually just proving a point. Like this is how ridiculous this is. I could come here with these massive titties with hard nipples and put a wig on and they're going to protect me. Well, no, because um, he's apparently 
she Who was knows? been transitioning for a while. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. So the school was like, oh, they've that's been, for sure. We've been you know notified. That. Yeah. Because after a while, after I thought about it, we were going back and forth. I'm like, you know what? This is like so ridiculous that this could be just like a massive- What a great troll job that would be. Though, it would huh? be a great troll job, wouldn't it? That's I mean- Because it's so absurd. I'd like, like to see someone show up with a massive prosthetic dick. And yeah. just show up in class with it coming through the pants and be like, wow. yeah, this is, this is just I mean, you, I... you would, except for if it wasn't your, your kid's school. No. <laughs> yeah. I'm talking about for as a, tr as a troll, like to troll. Yeah, everybody. yeah, yeah. Troll yeah. jobs. Uh, like but anyway, category. that page, that's their goal. And they got shut down and wiped off uh, social media. Not PayPal. all social media. They're still on Instagram and stuff like that. They have like 170,000 followers. It was the, uh, the, for them to take donations, they were basically yeah. shutting it down. Yeah. They're shutting down. Like, I don't remember if it was PayPal, Venmo. Do you have the article, Doug, by chance? Uh, I'll pull it up. Um, yeah, I think it was. Uh, I just want to make sure I get it right because social gonna... media companies are in a in a really bad position. That's just straight up. <clears throat> the second they started uh, editing content, mm -hmm. they opened themselves up for um, litigation and they opened themselves up for legislation. Well, they're feeding right into Rumble. I wish I would have bought that stock sooner. I know. I'm so mad that I didn't do that. I yeah. mean, it's, like the, it's so obvious that they're going to explode because of that. I know. So they they are on social media, right? They're on mm -hmm. Instagram. Mm -hmm. well, so, this oh, is actually not their page, but no. they do have a page. Yes. They're banned from PayPal and Venmo. Look at yeah. that. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. I mean, it, and is there any response from any of these platforms in terms of like the rationale and the why? Well, it's actually, Doug, if you go back, they'll tell you. It says why they got banned. What is yeah, so they have a couple uh, letters that they've received. Uh, it's in violation of PayPal's acceptable use policy regarding your use of PayPal products. It's so vague. <laughs> so vague. It's yeah. so vague. What, what, I wish they were honest and they just said, we don't like you. So we're yeah. going to kick you off and we can do that. We're a private company. But why? Why? I mean, I don't understand. Like an organization like that, you should be uplifting. They were trying to say they're hateful because they ridic they, they, they're ridiculing, I think. Groomers? Uh, th that term now has been, there, that has been banned on some social media. If you use that. So in fact, on Twitter, they have to yeah. black out the like three or four letters in the middle of groomers. Yeah. Because that particular phrase has you been know, now deemed a slur, right? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I gotta gotta look out for them. Weird, <laughs> yeah. weird, yeah. weird yeah. times. Oh, it's so time. strange. Yes. All right, let's go back to health Anyways, and stuff. Get out of here. There's this compound that I just learned about from Max Lugavere. That's really interesting. I hope I'm saying it right. It's uh, hydroxy a petite, hydroxy petite. I think it's called, and you can find it in toothpaste, and it remineral remineralizes your teeth. It's totally natural. Have you guys heard of this? Uh -uh. So it help, it fights cavities. It's not fluoride. It's not a chemical. It's actually part of what your bones are made of. So they put it in some toothpaste. Yeah. And they show that if you so use this, it'll it'll it can it'll help heal it and help you kind of get it'll, thicker teeth. It'll help like you heal denser. cavities wow. and strengthen your your teeth. Is uh, uh, uh alkaline Ooh. water supposed to be good for that too? I have no idea. I thought I thought I heard that. Really? Yeah, yeah. Actually, my dentist told me that went to alkaline so, water. Yeah. Well, you know what? She when I because I have I actually go next week to go get four cavities handled. So uh, you get cavities easy, huh? No, this is, I've never had a cavity. I've never had to do anything in my life. Oh, it was that one time you had Remember I told you I'm fucking so skeptical of it because I've had it, then it's gone. <laughs> so here's what happened to me last time. Here's, here's That's how, right. I forgot. Here's, here's me admitting how bad I am right now. Okay, so the rock star does it. I feel like Adam's an undercover conspiracy theorist. Totally. You guys are slowly. Dentists are out to get you guys. Yeah, yeah. Slowly. <laughs> slowly. <laughs> Dentists aren't real. Dentistry, <laughs> Dentistry <laughs> is a hustle, dude. Or fake. No, it's, it's real. It is a fucking news. hustle. And I know I'm offending yeah, no. hella dentists that are listening right now, but I'm uh, sorry. Half your profession is a hustle, dude. Half of it's a hustle. No. <laughs> so, sorry. Oh, wow. I know you're saving some lives and some mouths. 100% you're needed. I'm going to get okay? my friend on the phone. But let's dude. be honest. Let's half of its hustle dude here's so i because you got one bad guy that's why no that's not true it's not just one this has happened to me multiple times where i i go in i'm told i've, I've been told before i had like 12 when i was younger i was told i had like 12 cavities my family couldn't afford to fucking fix that so they're just like deal with it right <laughs> wait, so, wait, wait, your, mom, your mom's hey we're gonna have to give you soft food <laughs> yeah, yeah. Rub, rub some testing on it like, it was like 12 cavities oh my god we're, How, we're, what's, we're, what's the price of a fixed one <laughs> yeah right so, <laughs> which was the worst half of that you know, what kind of payment plan you guys have <laughs> so payment plan i i I didn't I, we didn't fix anything we didn't do anything years go by right uh see another dentist like four years later like that oh you no cavities I have no cavities all of a sudden right so from having 12 to having none right uh same thing happens when i get into my 20s I get into my 20s I actually have a dentist who uh she's uh, i train her and she's asked me how long you've been I, i'm already skeptical and i'm like oh i should probably go so i go get a cleaning and 
She's like, oh, you ha- I have a few cavities, right? Like, oh, you have a few cavities. Like, what are? And she's at me. Now, what was great? She's a client of mine, a friend. She was asking me about my diet and stuff, mm-hmm. and I'm telling her all the things I do. And at that time, I was drinking like two rock stars a day. And she's like, oh, yeah. She goes, that's that's eating away at the enamel on your teeth. Mm-hmm. She goes, you, you really should stop that. I go, really? And I'm like, okay. So before I decide to go do the cavities, I go, you know, let me first see. Because it was starting to hurt. That's actually what. It was the first time actually like my teeth hurt. Like it hurt, and that's why I went in, right? So then I go, okay, I'm going to cut it out. So I cut out the rock stars. Cut them out. And it took about, I want to say like six months. The pain went away completely. And then like, it, it, I think I waited a few more months before I went in and saw her again cavities are gone again yeah. well cavities can you know they can heal right yeah. so that's part of the, the they don't fucking tell you most dentists don't tell you they don't yeah. go like hey if you change your diet and stop this or this like you may not you may well, not that's need because it. nobody does that bro it's like it's like a doctor telling client oh your blood pressure is high oh, do not defend them in this right really? now, bro. no i mean because they, they don't do that it's just like my psoriasis with the freaking with them with the, the same thing they don't ask me about i was asking them probably them questions is there something i could do in my diet could i be lacking something just, oh no no here's a steroid here's the cream it's yeah. like they don't even want to address the the root cause of it they just want to give you the medication wonder- and the prescription the same thing goes with the dentist I they, wonder- you have an issue like that they're not asking me about my diet yeah but i wonder if if that wasn't uh common knowledge to them at that point i think it might be what i'm not 90 bro it's only freaking a few years ago what are you talking about how long ago was it <laughs> well the first time the very no first... no no the last time that you went with the female, uh, your, your client. um well it's been 12 years now okay yeah 12 yeah, years i don't so. know that's a good question hmm i you know what i will back you up because i do know um i, I did have a client that was an oral surgeon and he always told me if a, if a dent- dentist ever tells you you need something come see me and i'll confirm if it's yeah, if it, if it wasn't for me having the client, I would have never learned this. Yeah, like I just I thought it was a mystery, like how do like the cavities come and go like that, and then she was the first person to ask me about my diet because she's I'm teaching her about diet, yeah. and she's so she's like quizzing mm-hmm. me back, like well, what are you eating or what are you drinking? You know, it's then, all about the microbiome in your mouth. Yeah, that's well, that's why you will or won't get. Cavities. Which is also right. oh, back to the original thing with the alkaline water. So it's the a big test of your health. Too. She yep. would tell me if you're going to continue to do them then what you need to do as soon as you're done is to rinse your mouth with alkaline water. Oh, And she goes, and, and, and regular water wouldn't do the trick. So I needed alkaline water to kind of rinse, to rinse the, the teeth off. To, Have so. you heard of that? Uh, there's this, I don't know if he's an oral surgeon or not, but he's like basically applying this technique where you press your tongue up to the roof of your mouth and like you can like slowly manipulate I guess, like the space uh, in your mouth, like over time, like through, you know, kind of strengthening your jaw and like doing these like exercises to kind of avoid oral surgery. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, Jessica has read a lot of stuff and she brought this to me and she said, you know, when little kids, babies chew on tough things, when they Mm -hmm. chew on tough things and they work their jaw, it it spreads like we're their atrophying pa- it over time. It spreads their palate, and they're less likely to need like wisdom teeth. Like, why is everybody getting their wisdom teeth pulled out, right? Um, so that's kind of what she told me. Yeah, yeah you, it's, it's it's a, it's a Katrina's family did this. They had it for Max. You give them a piece of leather, and they just they just chew on the leather. Really? Yeah, like a, just a, a leather strap, a leather strap, and let them <laughs> chew on it. How we had, he's right. he used to do it. Um, I and also things that fuck it up are like pacifiers. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the the pacifier will mess it will mess up that. Will end up getting like an overbite from sucking on it for too long. Yeah, because it'll it'll it change the palate. Mm-hmm. Did you guys know? I learned this from Max Lugavere also. You know that um, mouthwash, mouthwash increases your risk of heart attacks, not heart attacks, uh, high blood pressure, and heart disease in the future. Well, mm-hmm. isn't it like is it when is a good a comparison? It's like a, a doing mouthwash is like antibiotics. It is for the mouth. Right? So what happens goes is, in there and just fucking kills so th- everything. It does. Good so and bad. in some cases, it's good. Like uh, like uh, it can actually reduce viral load if you're like around sick people. Mm-hmm. Um, if you have an infection, I guess that's probably better than nothing. But using it regularly, it destroys the bacteria in your mouth, which are responsible for producing what are called nitrites. And these nitrites, they help produce nitric oxide. So they did a study where people use mouthwash post-workout. Yeah. And they compared them to people that didn't. The people that used it post-workout had worse results, worse blood sugar levels, worse uh, adaptations, everything, because they affected their body's ability to now, produce isn't nitric this, oxide. Isn't this same theory mm. very similar, too, to like all the products and stuff that you hear using your hair? Like, doesn't it kill that? Like, you by using certain shampoos and stuff that have certain, so. certain chemicals in it, like you're yeah. – killing all that off like there's the oils that your body naturally produce in your hair there's like there's a lot it's it, like you shouldn't basically if you have one of those like 
strong chemical like shampoos you shouldn't do it like every yeah. day well you i mean well toothpaste too is kind of funny you know toothpaste is all bullshit right yeah yeah i remember first learning about that yeah you don't yeah. i mean it's, yeah, you it's just, just use like the activated charcoal right activated or, charcoal you know, or nothing soda. you could just use water and it works the same just yes the difference is that it, it scrubbing toothpaste it. foams up and it you know makes you feel like does it really this is it really I, no, I'm, to so, make okay, it I'm so conditioned to like it though it's like i, I know I okay so now is it really like just at the same, like using yeah. just water, brushing yeah. your teeth? Yeah. Baking soda, I think. So you mean to tell me we've created like a billion dollar market yes. on something that just doesn't even, isn't completely not yeah. necessary? Yes, it does. Really? Yep. Now, the only difference is if you use products. You fact checking that, Doug? Plus, there's like sugar in there. This there's is no, hilarious. not sugar. Uh, there's like artificial sweeteners. Sweetener, but yeah. yeah artificial but sweetener. Not all though, right? Like, I mean, companies like Tom's and stuff like that, they, that's what they, that's what, they, I mean, that's yeah. what we use or if yeah. we're using but public most goods. most of them, are like the reason that has flavor, it's like, you know, they're adding some kind of sweetener. Right. There. Now, unless you use, like I just said, hydroxy petite, that's been shown to help remineralize fluoride. Is, there's studies that show it helps with cavities, but there's also controversy around that. What does that say? Toothpaste is not necessary to make your clean, your teeth clean or healthy. Yeah. Which sound? Without toothpaste is just as effective in removing plaque. In some cases, it's more effective. Yeah. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> fuck, we're getting Man. hustled one fucking left and Bro, right. Just they, taking left and right. They literally industry down. <laughs> created, they li whoever, what's the first toothpaste? What a brilliant son of a bitch. He invented. Arm and hammer. He right? invented an entire right. market. Yeah. And he's just like soap for your mouth. How much? Yeah. How much? Huh. How much? How much do we spend a year in, in toothpaste? Come on. Give me some numbers here. I mean, uh, it's crazy. Uh, you ever seen the kids' toothpaste? It's like candy. Oh, yeah. Strawberry flavor. Yeah. Bubble gum. I, yeah. I remember when I was little, my brother, my mom used to have like, to watch it because he would eat Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, no, no. Don't eat it. Spit it out. It. Yeah, because he used to like the taste So of in 2018, it. the U.S. oral care market size was $8.2 billion. Wow. I don't know if that's all toothpaste. Well, well, I mean, flossing is mouth, mouthwash and toothpaste too, like the biggest freaking scams ever. Well, right, flossing actually makes the biggest difference, yeah, and that's yeah, the thing yeah. that nobody does. Uh, yeah, oh, flossing. Yeah. I'm a water pick guy now. Like, you yeah, do? I'm more yeah. Those things too. are strong, dude. Yeah. 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 No, I do the I do the floss. Yeah, I have them in my in my bag and I use them all the time. Yeah. Anyway, you? very interesting. I'd like to know about the chupacabra, Justin. Yeah, I know you I, have some facts on that. I did put that. that up there, and I'm what? so interested. So here's the thing: you've heard of the chupacabra. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So Andrew knows all about, right? Andrew chupacabra. That's, come on, man. Yeah, just shakes his head. Yeah, he is. <laughs> he, he's not the chupacabra. <laughs> you imagine? So apparently, some lady uh, had not only okay. So on her ranch, the, the typical signs of like the chupacabra are that their livestock somehow get like their, their blood sucked out of them. Drained. Just drained. Like it's, it's a weird predatory um, habit that uh, they've noticed this in a couple of different ranches. And, and so they've all kind of described it as this kind of hairless creature that kind of looks like a, a, a mangy kind of a dog or whatever. But it like walks on teeth. hind legs, right? Well, I I don't know. That's again. This okay. is where everybody kind of creates their own uh, oh, version boy. of it. But so she actually um, caught this creature, and uh, like somebody hit it with a car, and so then they finally like were able to take it and and, and get some DNA samples on it. And so what they found was it's a hybrid mix between a uh, American coyote and then a Mexican wolf. So it's a real animal? So it's a real animal, but they they can't attribute its behaviors of of like Sucking why blood. it feeds on blood specifically, like <laughs> why it has like vampire like qualities to it. Like so they can't they can't like pin it down to that because there's no like real video evidence of it doing that specifically, but they found it on the ranch and they've noticed it's it's coming in and out. Is that the official name of the animal now? Chupacabra, or do they give it a different name? I have I don't know if that's wow. that's just like a recent uh, development in the um, cryptozoology world. Wow, I, you know, I, <laughs> hey it's a real, real science. I'm still, I'm still, I still hold out. I think they're gonna find Bigfoot at some point. That's just that's yeah. My you think opinion. so? I no way, dude. Bro, the evidence is crazy. Really? Kinda. No, no it's, not really. It's, Kinda. It's, it's crazy absent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, all these shows about it, nobody catches. They found yeah. hair. Yeah. Poop. Yeah. Smells. Yeah. Footprints. Lots of lots of knocking trees. Yeah, that's, I mean, it would be so it. wild to even find uh, something like this at this point in our evolution. Oh, oh yeah, so they, yeah, so they that that right there, they stuffed it, and so it's like uh, she put it on display now. But it's a real, 
real animal. No, but I, you think about that in terms of mutations and like hybrids, like I'm sure like there's some messed up looking creatures out there. Um, uh, and they were going further. I was like, I was like reading about this, like how, I don't know. They, they were talking about scientists were talking about in terms of like what they actually think is still out there that we've never even discovered. It's like, it's, it's a, a lot, like a, the percentage is really high of uh, creatures they think are still, you know, in parts of the world that haven't been explored. Well, yeah, don't, we, one, don't we learn like every day a certain amount? Yes. Like, yeah. New, right? Yeah. There was one, I think it was a Tasmanian something that we thought was extinct. <laughs> It was not that long ago, and then we saw one of them. And we're like, oh, I mean, thing. wouldn't it be so Tasmanian simple just to breed those tiger? Things? I think it's a Tasmanian tiger. Maybe Doug could look it yeah, up. Yeah, so it, it looks kind of like a, it, I guess they said that's a marsupial. Yeah. Which is weird because it looks kind of like a tiger stripes on its on its back. Sometimes I love Justin so but, much. But uh, yeah, I get into this kind of stuff, stuff too. Really yeah, because he's as, he's as weird as I am with some stuff. It's really yeah, cool. there and it is its right jaw. There. Its jaw opens like a weird, like an absurd length. Like it almost like it, it unhinges like a, a snake. Yep. Yep. There it, it is, is right like, there. Oh, yeah, it's wow. creepy. Look at that. Look at that thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look, look at how big its jaw opens. Look at that. I'll bite you right in the butt. That is wild. It's a trip. Man. Hey, uh, so I got a cool. I got something that's really interesting. Article. I just uh, I just read this morning. So this is this is actually kind of fascinating. So you guys familiar with these? What do they call the four D ultrasounds they do on on babies now? Yeah, yeah, they look all weird. What's yeah. the fourth dimension? I mean, that's what they call okay. it, right? But <coughs> you, did you get one? Did they have them when you had your boys? Um, we just had. It was like a three D. I don't know if it was the four D where you can like see their face and what it looks like. Uh, yeah, you can. We, I think we did that forever. Yeah, we, okay. we did. Yeah, really cool, right? Yeah. So we did one for Aurelius. We did one with uh, with the, with the baby now, Dahlia, and uh, it's interesting because you can see features and stuff. Mm -hmm. So they're using this technology, and what they did is they they're watching the baby's face in real time in the womb, <clears throat> and then they're having the mom eat or take a capsule with strong flavors like kale or carrots or beef to see if there's a reaction on the baby's face. Oh, wow. And you guys want to hear something crazy? Yeah. The babies react. Babies make a disgusting face after eating kale. That's one of the things that they found. <laughs> <laughs> this, how wild yeah. is that? How are they determine yeah. what Take a disgusting kale, face people. is? Yeah. Like the baby would literally make a face like it's bitter it's or, like, or they like it in the womb wow. while the mom's eating the thing or trip. taking the capsule. Yeah. How crazy is that? I mean, it's not actually that crazy when you think about it. I mean, we've talked about we know already that you're you what what the mother eats is already affecting. Look at this. Scans conducted shortly after ingestion revealed that fetuses were more likely to make laughter faces when exposed to the taste of carrot and cry faces after encouraging kale <laughs> or after in, encountering kale. Excuse me. Yeah. How is that crazy? Yeah, wow. that's wild. But it's, so I mean, this this. So the study sh helps shed light on the development of human taste and smell receptors, and it could facilitate the development of healthy eating habits by familiarizing babies with certain foods. So you know what's going to happen with this, right? Now, logically, you would think, well, mom's going to eat healthy then when she's pregnant so that the baby can develop tastes for healthy foods. Mm -hmm. But of course, that would take too much work and, and you know, they're not going to do that. So what do you think is going to happen? Pills. Correct. Wow. There's going to be a whole market. Wow. For yeah. capsules. Supplements. Yes, where mom is going to be like, all right, honey, time for your kale, yeah. <laughs> time for your whatever, <laughs> and just take the capsules to kind of get the baby. Oh, man, that'd be funny if they could have like that monitor like as you're – Doing that real time and see that <laughs> isn't that weird? Yeah. I mean, I'm it's I'm like, convinced Ugh. that Max is I'd be like, such creatine, a good eater powder. because yeah. of Katrina and her diet during her pregnancy. Yeah. Like she ate like so dialed the entire pregnancy, and I think that that's why. I mean, there, he eats everything. He eats everything. Yeah, yeah. Anything we put in front of him, there's nothing he didn't like. Nothing. There's nothing that kid does not like. He'll, really? Yeah, he'll eat. Uh, you know, I take that back. Uh, I knew there was something. E eggs, eggs don't sit well with them. Oh, weird. Yeah. Oh, do they bother his gut? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. so he get, he 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 would get like uh, red blotches on his face. And Interesting. So, yeah, so did we, you try just yolks? Um, I don't think Katrina did that. I think she just tried to introduce eggs a few times and then actually. So saw Aurelius was getting this kind of weird rash, and we thought 
we trying to we're trying to figure out what it was. We're still not a hundred percent what it is, but we removed egg whites because that's a very common one. Yeah. So he just eats egg yolks. So yeah. every because I mean that's where all the nutrients are anyway. Yeah. So in the morning we make him uh two two or three egg yolks yeah. every morning. That's actually that's the only thing that he's not a fan. He's thrown up on it before, so I think that's why too. So he's thrown up on them and stuff. She's tried to introduce him multiple times. That is the only thing. Everything else, and I think she just hasn't really worried too much about it because the rest of his diet is so dialed. It's like if the kid doesn't end up liking eggs, he doesn't like eggs. So she tried enough times where she was kind of like whatever about it but everything i mean he'll eat raw fish he'll eat i mean he'll eat damn near anything dude wow. so it's wild oh, and that's i cool. and i really think that has a lot to do with just i mean katrina was so dialed in when she was when she was pregnant yeah with her. aurelius just anything meat loves meat and will eat the hell out of me she made him liver yesterday liver by itself there was nothing in it it was liver and salt oh not even mixed huh no oh. pure on liver and he just he crushed chicken liver a whole thing wow so she's mm. going to give him like a liver once a month or something like that cuz you know so 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 nutrient dense you don't want to give a kid yeah, it's liver a lot. too much iron or whatever but once a month he'll throw down a liver now so I'm like, all right get on him dude I know. Yeah. is that great yeah that's great anyway so. so justin are those those are viori yeah they make you camo. Guys didn't realize they had camo pants. I didn't no. know. That. I didn't know that. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Now, what are, are those? The ripstop. Awesome. It's the ripstop. Yeah. So it's that's the one. I, you I've had a few pairs of these, but uh, yeah, the the camo was was cool. It's it's. Interesting. Let me see the bottoms of them. Or are they tapered? Why don't you stand, at all? Up, don't you stand uh, up and show everybody what, what's going on here? Look at this. Oh yeah. Wait, wait. Don't make it weird. Yeah, just <laughs> just show the pants. Yeah. I like the ripstop. I work out in the ripstop, and then I wear the. I don't remember what these are called. I'm not a good model. Are you two X in those? Uh, I think I'm XL. Oh, you're XL. Yeah. I, I so I'm two X in those, and then two I X in the butt, and then uh, that little comparison thing. You see what you just did? Yeah, I see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm double. Yeah. Oh, I'm bigger than I'm, that. I'm the bigger like, guy. So quadruple. You, were you? I knew you're not on IG. Did you know I jabbed at you last week? Of the, the no, store? you did. What'd you yeah, say? Yeah, I had uh, the the my the university shirts that that Doug's wearing right now, the new one. The okay, one that, and I was wearing it. And I'm like, for all of you big guys that are my size, this is a uh, this is what an XL looks like. If you guys are smaller, like Sal, it's a large. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Even I gotta smaller, get back Medium, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I miss all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. I was Medium. fired at you. Was, Those I, bastards. Yeah, it's it's more fun when I know you're watching. I, I toyed with the idea of getting back on Instagram for a second. Yeah, why don't you do it? Do the reels thing. I because want you to do. I know. Can you be Schmein Pump Sal? You, like you, something. Just there's a piece of me that's just so annoyed. You know what I mean? Like I gotta play your stupid game. I know, but it makes it's no fun for me to. Exactly, I, now dude. I feel like all I'm doing is picking on Justin all the time. Yeah, it's like, I get over it. You yeah, know? It's like, he's, he's less always fun. from Adam. He's less know? fun. He's yeah. less fun to make fun of. <laughs> yeah, because I don't give a shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he doesn't fire back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. do that. No. I don't. <laughs> Sometimes. Is that what you I know, do? you can't. Did you see the la the last video that I made fun of Justin? Did you? I don't think you saw that either. Did you? I. I there's a video of. Is like a like I don't know I want to say it's in the uh, when's Lady Gaga's big oh yeah like the, the oh, super fan that. that gets up and dances yeah, with her super fan gets up, and you know how many people really thought that was you no I had way. so they many people like, like me I I mean not that, even close I didn't think so either but I got hell of people going like Justin really did that like oh, oh my god worst. oh yeah I wish. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I wish I had those kind of skills. You, know? you, you are a good dancer, Justin. Don't pretend. I am, but the best I, I got to get a few beverages in me first. The, the best one of the group, for sure. Mm, yeah. Adam, what's this thing about the Patagonia fa founder? Did we talk about this? Because I think this is pretty interesting. Oh, no, we didn't. And you know what? Like, Okay, so that's it's a little old news. It's a week old now. Uh, the Patagonia founder came out and just said that he is 100% donating all proceeds when he passes uh, of Patagonia to uh to fighting climate change so all his money yes when he dies so goes he's gonna in. give all his money to greta thunberg <laughs> <laughs> all of it how dare you so really yes so what are your thoughts on it because mm. i actually it's his money so you know i mean of course that's such the political answer yeah but like, no, that's, that's, that's so vague though like where specifically does that end up yeah that, so that's that's, I a, that's so that's a big one because okay oh so so also okay somebody who is that talented to build something that big and create that much wealth, I feel like you could do so much more with it that will in, impact the environment positively than just coming out and saying something like that. Well, who, knows what's, it to the same. who knows what's under what they're going to do? I mean, I hate criticizing stuff it's like definitely, that. I tell you what, it's definitely getting all, people are all, I mean, I even saw in our forum. I saw some people say, oh, that's Like they're, they're stoked on it? Or yeah, yeah, pissed? people are stoked on it. I wow. saw some people, oh, people say, people it so was, yeah, but I saw some people criticize it and say this, he's avoiding taxes somehow, which I don't, I don't understand. 
if you're I was dead. A <laughs> well, for some, for uh, maybe for his kids, I don't know. It was someone made okay, some point. I, I didn't really pay angle. attention. Okay. I, so I mean, look, here's the deal. I, I, I stuff like this, it's your money. Okay, do what you want. Um, now, if it was me and I wanted to fight climate change, and I don't know if he's doing this or not, but I would take my money and I would invest heavily in in energy technology yeah, innovation. Well, that's, that's what how I'm you need to. That's, how that's you what I'm saying. Happen. Somebody right. with that much power, that much money, that much talent to build something like that. You would be better. I mean, that's why I like Elon Musk so much, right? So somebody who doesn't need any more money, he could also cash his chips out. He could also say like, hey, Tesla's all goes to climate change. That's it. Or he could take his brain and his skills and build a company that actually does something that yeah. could potentially yeah. really change the world, right? Mm -hmm. So- you know, to, it's to me, it's a it's a massive virtue signal. That's what it is. I mean, that's what I that's the read I get on something like that. Because like, does then, he have kids and stuff? I don't know. This is, look him up, Doug. That's why we have a producer. Yeah. Do these <laughs> <laughs> I was actually deep into the Patagonia Patagonia stuff. What was your question on that? So he's asking if the the kids. Well, does what he do you have a family? What are you, what are you getting to the bottom of right now? Oh well, I mean, one of the things I'd heard too is Patagonia's clothing is largely a lot of petroleum-based products. So I heard that too. So mm. I thought that was an interesting thing. I was just doing some research on that. So his kids, yeah, I do believe he has children. So that's the irony too. I heard that same thing that Doug just said. Is that um, so? It's like you, <laughs> you have this largely based petroleum-based like clothing line. Like, how about you do a different clothing line? That's so what? actually, this this could be a good. This actually start could spark a good conversation. Um, Let's say you guys had a billion dollars when you died. Yeah. Would you leave all of it to your family or would you take, or would you leave some would, of it? I wouldn't leave any just to my family. I would set my family up with things, but I would not just give money to my family. What, what do you mean? How would you set them up? Like either through like other, through other businesses. Right. So ideally even what we're building right now, right. Like my son would hopefully, you know, manage the real estate portfolio and be and like have to be in the business, working it, scaling yeah. it, growing it. Like he wouldn't just get and like he he would get the proceeds of while he's alive and he, from it, but he couldn't just go take. I wouldn't. I would set it up like a trust where he couldn't go and just sell I'm, it and just walk away yeah. freaking with you know a hundred million dollars and then like no way. There's no yeah. way I would do that. I get torn. Like I think to myself, like how would because I almost feel like that could ruin their ability to like to care for themselves and to find I don't know. Yeah. Meaning well it depends. If you do a, know, you if know? you do a good job, I feel like as a as as fathers of raising them on on some of the principles of hard work and 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 finding their way and all and yeah and here's the reality. I, I forget the stats on this, but it's actually unfortunately unlikely that my son will even want to do any of the things that yeah that are, are ours. So, and that's kind of it is like, I, I hope, I hope I can provide an opportunity and, uh, and good lessons why he's raising that he has an opportunity to step in the family business and take it to the next level sure. or do more mm -hmm. with it. But I'm also not going to not be supportive of him if he's like, I ah, dad, I want to do my own thing. Like that's you, yeah, you know, like yeah. that's your legacy or that's your thing you build and stuff like I would that. Respect that. Yeah. I would respect that too. Yeah, I don't so. know. Yeah. It's interesting. Cause was it Warren Buffett? Like he doesn't, uh, yeah, his kids don't get like nothing. I mean, they, they get like some kind of safety. Is that what it is? I like think. a million? I think they get a million. It's each. like a safety net. <laughs> yeah. And I kind of like that in terms of like them being able to find their own purpose and their own clear path. Uh, but like to, for me to, uh, provide, you know, all of this, like, just excess. I I would have. I don't know, man. I I wouldn't think that I'm setting them up. No, you turn them into a spoiled brat. Yeah, you'd be so you'd be like a one in a million chance that they don't turn into like a spoiled. I like the million yeah, thing. That's, those like trust fund babies. You know what I mean? a, a, just, a million's not bad because yeah, or like fund a business venture of some sort. So, but there has to be some kind of like uh, so stipulations mind, behind. Yeah, it. Yeah, I like something like that. Like um, you, uh, you know, I could give you a loan, and but you'd have to come to me with a good business plan. I'd also position it like a real, you know, loan and a real potential partnership. That's a cool quote right there. Yeah. Warren Buffett is quoted by saying the perfect inheritance is enough money so that children, uh, children feel they can do anything, but not so much that they could do nothing. That's oh, wow. brilliant. I love that. That's, That's why I said, perfect. I was just getting ready to say a million yeah. is a good number because yeah. a million is, you're not living off of a million dollars for the rest of your life no, at all. But it's enough to start a business. And it's, it's enough also to enough to potentially wipe out any student loans, get you out of any sort of like yeah. debt, also put down a nice down payment on a really nice house or pay a house off completely. Mm -hmm. So at least you're like, you are safe and you're starting yeah. with a good head start, but you're not set. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. I mean, I could see myself doing something like that where I leave a, a, a piece of money like that to where I'm giving them a head start, but I'm not, 
I'm not setting him up so much that they literally could do nothing, you know? Interesting. Yeah, yeah. It'd be like one of those like movies where the, the guy dies and then he, he leaves like riddles and shit for their kids <laughs> to get there. You know I mean? Well, isn't there yeah. another stat that's out there for like the how how many generations it takes to like squander wealth like that? And how how do you know have you heard that, Doug, before? Like, I've heard that. Like yeah. by like the third generation, they say. Yeah. They get rid of it. Yeah. So it's like our sons will will have been a part of seeing what we've done and built, and so they tend to carry it on a little bit, but the yeah. third generation is so disconnected connected from grandpa that they don't they don't they don't value it the same way and they tend to spoil it and, and fuck it off and just destroy it or whatever I, I i can't remember what i read yeah so there's a staggering 70 percent of wealthy families lose their wealth by the next generation Ooh. with 90 percent losing it the generation after that wow oh, man that's crazy. so you're doing them a huge disservice by giving them a lot of wealth yeah, that's essentially what you're doing. Yeah, basically, yeah. because they just they, they don't learn how to how ninety to handle percent themselves. by the third generation and seventy by the second generation. No, no, no. no seventy for the first, ninety by the second. Mm -hmm. That's what you said. Oh, I thought you said yeah, yeah. seventy by the yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. So like our 90. son, our son would, is, <laughs> has a seventy percent chance of blowing our shit. Yeah, seventy percent. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. and ninety his kid. Yep. <sighs> maybe, maybe I thought about this. That I would say something like, "Hey, kids, you get a million dollars after you make your first million, or something like that." You could do that. Yeah. You can make a trust and put rules in there. They'll say you get this money after you do this or this, so you could kind of prove yourself. Yeah, the only problem with that is though, then you then you you're basically telling them they have to go into entrepreneurship. Like, what if your kid ends up wanting to be a you know, artist or a teacher or something that's, that's never going to make that kind they of money. Get the money. <laughs> they never get the money. <laughs> that's a, you found that money's not important. Well, the other okay. thing, the other thing is, is a cool way would be to just provide, which I think probably a lot of really wealthy people do is just provide the shelter. Right. So like they inherit a sick house. It's like, you just get a house, you know, you, you get, you get your house, your house is. Free. I don't know. I go back and forth on this, you know, what, what I would do because I don't want to, I don't want, you know, my family to be, to, to just not find that meaning, not build anything themselves, to not get that, the value of that. Uh, but at the, of course, at the same time, there's this really strong desire to take care of my family, <clears throat> right? Yeah. That's that's a inside, you know, struggle. Mm. So I go back and forth on what that would look like. I, I think the the secret, <clears throat> and I really like, remember when we interviewed Ben Greenfield and he, you know, they had like the the family. Uh, yeah, the legacy sort of yeah. Yeah, setup. I think, I think that's so, in, if you're going to, if you're going to be that small 5% that make it, three, four, or five generations, I think that there's got to be someone in the family as a leader. I really want to be this in my family, right? I really want to be the person in my family that kind of sets this going forward, mm -hmm. that like you're proud of your last, you're very proud to be a Schaefer. This is what Schaefers do. We we, we act like this. Yeah. We have integrity. We work hard. We don't it's make it. It's defined. It's very defined. So <clears throat> yeah, like yeah. it's really... Like the, I got a lot the, of that the, the people that I've met that are uh, that are from families like this are the ones that I see that have this generational success is because somebody in the family has created this for yeah. their family yeah. and it gets passed down and there's tremendous pride in that name Dude, and, I hear, and carrying that and that carrying that legacy. I hear stories from I have uh, my aunt. She does uh, estate planning and she, she you know when people die, where does the money go? All that stuff. She said, you would be blown away by when somebody dies and has millions to leave, the fighting oh, and yeah. the shit that goes it's on between- ugly, yeah. Even when there's a oh, will. Oh, bro, she's told me stories. I'm like, I can't believe- Especially if it's not clearly defined. It's sort of like- Oh, no, even if it is clearly oh, defined. Oh, yeah. If it's clearly defined, they still get crazy. Yeah. It's oh, like, she was If it's me. not, you're guaranteed it's going to get like well, that. Well, guaranteed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Point, but, it was crazy. Uh, yeah. Dude, did you guys see- So, I don't know. Did you send this article to me? It was one about- China being able to get some kind of mineral from the moon uh, and trying to to uh, use that to usher in yeah this, yeah the fusion fusion yeah yeah that's the race is that right real now. this is a big energy race going on right now people don't realize this but uh, we had like the big nuclear race we had this is this is the next uh, frontier the first country to create energy cheaply effectively and cleanly which fusion has that promise. The first country to do that will be the superpower of the world. Yeah. They will be. So this is a big deal. That's crazy. It's kind of going on right now. Yeah. No wonder we created Space Force. Yeah. It dude. makes sense now. Dude, yeah. did you see Space Force? Don't they have like- There's a cart- Oh, in the cartoon. Hold on. Don't they have like camo? <laughs> like, like, why are you going to camo? You're in space. Yeah. <laughs> is it really? Black, that's not dude. true. Is it true? You should Look be black with a Force. couple specks of is uniform light. Is it true? Yeah, I think so. Like blue camo or something? Yeah, it was something like that. Like, what are you, what are you blending yeah, What are you into? hiding from? That's kind of funny. 
That's a bit. That is a bit comical, right? Yeah. yeah. Their gotta, emblem looks like Star Trek. You see it? Uh, yeah. They have the little yeah, Star Trek emblem. Did it, whatever happened to that, that show that was like a knockoff? Uh, like a, it was uh, terrible, dude. Like I was, I was hoping for that. Show I was I I thought, Steve Carell. Right. right and, I thought with Steve Carell, and I thought the story would be so. I, just, it, yeah. terrible I don't know. I think it, Space dude. Force would be. Sick. It didn't hook me. It didn't hook me. No, in. it was. It had all of the makings of a hilarious yeah, sitcom. Didn't that's, happen. That's uh, is that Space Force right there? That is Space Force. Yeah. Looks like they got a camo. Yeah. You There's know. jungles in space, apparently. Yeah, there is. I don't know if they're going to be in space. We don't know what Space Force is going to do. Obviously, they're going to be on the ground, too, so maybe that's what's going on. Yeah. Who knows? And those are on the ground know, Space Force people. This is interesting. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm paying attention. Check this out. You're not what you eat. You're what you digest. So we lose enzymes as we age. So if you don't have enough enzymes, you might only be absorbing 40% of the protein you're eating. What a massive waste. That's true, by the way. Masszymes breaks down the protein you eat into usable amino acids and boosts your absorption of nutrients. This means faster muscle recovery, more energy, less inflammation, a healthier gut, so less bloating, less constipation, and better digestion. This is for anyone who wants optimal digestion and to get rid of uncomfortable bloating and gas once and for all. And by the way, on their website, they actually have a video of Masszymes breaking down a piece of steak. It's super cool. Go check them out. Go to masszymes.com. That's M-A-S-S-Z-Y-M-E-S.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump 10 for 10% off any order. All right, here comes the rest of the show. First question is from April Mabel. What are the best exercises to build the glutes but not bulk the legs? Hip thrust. <sighs> Next question. In the end. <laughs> I mean, really? I mean, yeah. that's, I, that's the, I mean, well, all so, the all the rest. Okay, and good mornings. Yeah, I think you got to go. Okay, so when people say bulk the legs, they're usually talking about the quads. Mm. I almost I don't think I've ever encountered, and this is probably a female. Um, I've almost never encountered. I don't think I ever have encountered a woman Thought that said hamstrings. my hamstrings are getting too good. Point. Good too point. Built. So all deadlifts would be in there too. Yeah. So deadlifts, yeah. stiff legged deadlifts, yeah, Romanian, Romanian stiff legged, uh, single leg, mm -hmm. hip thrusts, like all of those don't really hit the quads. Yeah. They work the posterior chain, the hamstrings, and the glutes. And you could do all those exercises and not get lots of development, if any, in the quads, but lots of development in the hamstrings or the glutes. But also keep in mind, you're going to want to do some kind of split stance squatting and squatting just to maintain that technique and that skill because it's a fundamental skill. Mm -hmm. doesn't mean you need to train it hard or you need to go super heavy, but just enough to maintain that skill, that strength, protect the knees, keep your body moving well. But- but that's pretty much it. I've never had. Have you guys ever had a female client be like, "My hamstrings are"? No, too I think dope. that's a really no. good. That's a great point you're making too. That that's so true. Not only that, but I would make the case that. Um, so what I used to tell bikini competitors that I uh, that I would train was that the the hamstring glute tie-in is like is like what wins shows for for women. Yeah. If you and it, a lot of that is just most people have very underdeveloped hamstrings. There's just it's not a lot of people know what to do. Very few people deadlift. And so there's just not a lot of exercises in the gym. And so I think for the most part, hamstrings are neglected in comparison yeah. to like quad exercises. So mm -hmm. um, you're right. I don't, I, I don't think I've ever met anybody who has had overdeveloped hamstrings. It's just such a good look to, to develop that more anyway. So, I mean, I guess that that order for me would be, you know, traditional deadlifts, sumo deadlifts, and hip thrust and good mornings. Mm -hmm. You could rotate those four big movements. Yeah, any posterior hip hinging movement at that point mm -hmm. that avoids, yeah, like the you know the anterior. So we uh, this was actually a challenge for my ex. She was a competitor um, before Katrina, right? Uh, she was uh, she had these just crazy dominant legs, and like the, her coach had her completely el eliminate all loaded barbell, dumbbell, anything for her quads. She what she did do to maintain was she had sprints and she had a uh, body weight walking lunges. Mm. So body weight, maybe walk sled, maybe dre sled drives too. If you uh, yeah, to interchange sprints. hill sprints with sled drives. Yeah. Yeah. So that'd be enough to keep that, that Just some stimulus. Yeah. Yeah. That pattern. Although okay. I would do light. So, cause you could build on sled drives. You I mean, can, you, you could yeah, definitely build on, you, sled especially drives. if you're less demanding, but yeah, especially if you're build. like genetically, you know, you respond very quickly in the quads. But I mean, I th the thing with running hill sprints and or walking lunges is that's so functional. You know what I'm saying? Like that's mm -hmm. uh, like yeah. in your, that, that, that coordination to do that, the stability component that goes in there, uh, you're getting enough stimulation on the quads that they're, you're not going to, and especially if that's a, a muscle you already think is overdeveloped, you're not going to lose much from that. You're, and you're definitely not going to gain a lot of mass doing that. So I think those are, 
uh, really good movements. But. Yeah, but I, you know, I will say this too. The just to comment on this, the and it, this definitely can exist, but it's usually not the case. When I've had a female client worry about bulking the legs, it's just because her body fat was was too high, and when she got leaner, she was very happy. Women tend to store body fat in the lower body, right? And in the legs in particular, hips and legs. Mm -hmm. And once they got lean, they were very happy because developed quads on a woman who's at a healthy body fat percentage looks phenomenal. It's, it's a really nice look to the legs as well. It's not like it looks bad. But if you store body fat and you've got muscle, um, you can definitely feel like you're too big um, you're too bottom heavy or my quads are looking too big. So she probably feels a little out of balance. Yeah, yeah. The women that I know that didn't like this and, and I mean, I, I mean, it's usually not the case that their quads are actually too big. Is well, my you know, I mean, that's not, I, I usually, don't I don't know if I agree with that. I mean, I think that there's a lot of women that are very quad dominant and they, and when they do things like squatting and stuff like that, they, the quads are just blowing up and then they have kind of a small butt or a flat butt. And then they have these massive legs. I've, I mean, I trained a lot of women that, that was their, that was their thing was they had a hard time. I mean, that's why. But it wasn't that the legs were too big. It was the imbalance is what I'm trying to say. The same difference, right? Well, not necessarily. Like, you know, people who are like, oh my God, it's my, my legs are so big. It's like, well, once we balance your body out, that size you already have is fine. It's not that you shrink them. You know, because I think the answer to them is like, I want to make them smaller. Oh, I don't know. I, yeah, I don't think they necessarily want to go smaller per se. I think they just want to reap the benefits of all their squatting and Bulgarian split squats yeah, and, sure. and all their exercise they're sure. doing into their butt and and see it there and not so much in their sure. quads. And so I think that's that, or at least that's my experience with training this type of a person. And the movements that we just said is the move. You know, is uh, is to pretty much eliminate. Uh, I mean, definitely eliminate all leg pressing, front squats, even barbell back squats, hack squats. Like you don't need none of that stuff uh, for just do some body weight walking lunges, and then the rest is all posterior chain. The rest is mm -hmm. deadlifts, sumo deadlifts, Romanian deadlifts, your conventional deadlifts, your good mornings, and your hip thrust. You build your entire lower body routine around that, and you're gonna have some good looking legs, and you're gonna build some glutes. Next question is from Jake Housel one. I have the MAPS Aesthetic program. It's great, but I have a hard time getting through all the workouts on foundational days. I get tired and still have three workouts left usually. Do I have the wrong program? So I'm assuming they three mean three exercises. exercises. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, it's probably wrong for you. Look, if you're, doing a, if you're doing a program, I don't care if it's our program or another program, and you're like struggling to get through it, not, not appropriately struggling. Workouts should be hard. But I mean, you're like, drug, you're drudging yourself through it and you're starting to feel fried uh, throughout the day from it. You feel exhausted the day after. You're really sore. It's not right for you. It's you, just too much. And MAPS Aesthetic, you know, here's the deal. We wrote MAPS Aesthetic. It's a high volume. It's, it's volume city. It's it is too much volume for me yeah. often, yeah, even. Yeah. So people need to realize that with MAPS Aesthetic. MAPS Anabolic is more appropriate for most people. This happens. This I see this happening in our community when mm -hmm. we have somebody who let's say comes on, starts listening to Mind Pump and maybe has only been listening to the show for a short period of time and then they go looking for a program, you know, uh, and then they they go to the program that that they go, oh, they identify with. Oh, I, yeah. like I want to sculpt an aesthetic my, person. So I go to aesthetic, here. right? Versus, and, and it's not their fault. We don't, I don't think we communicate this enough uh, and we don't definitely don't have it on the website. But when we wrote, you know, anabolic performance and aesthetic, they were designed to go in that order. That's right. No matter what, even if you are a competitor and you want to be, and you want to be a physique guy or girl, like we, I still think you should go through anabolic performance and then move into aesthetic. It, it it's, we, we designed it to slowly ramp the volume up and to be ready for that when you get into aesthetic. And it's not like, doing performance and anabolic is going to hinder your aesthetics. So if you think that you identify with, you know, the aesthetic program, but you've never done any of our programs, I highly recommend you go anabolic performance. And then aesthetic. No, I'm going to say this right now, 85% of the people who watch and listen to the show, including fitness enthusiasts, the volume in maps anabolic is appropriate. 20 to 25% aesthetic and split would be appropriate. Okay, everybody else, aesthetic's too much volume. That's just straight up. I followed aesthetic, and when I have everything dialed in and I feel really good, I can get through it, and it works. If anything's off for me, and I have a lot of training experience. I've been doing this for a long time, so my body's got pretty damn good recovery compared to the average person. It's too much It's too much volume. Now, so let's say you go MAPS anabolic, MAPS performance, MAPS aesthetic, and you get to aesthetic, and you feel like shit. 
You feel too sore. You yeah, feel too stiff. Same is true. Cut the yeah, cut the volume. That's all you gotta do. Take the program and instead of doing three sets or four sets on an exercise, do two sets or one set. And just cut the volume down and see how you feel. Like this person right here doing maps aesthetic, cut the volume down by a third. And if that doesn't help, cut it down by another third. See how you feel. Uh, but if you feel this way, it's just not appropriate, regardless of what program you're following, even if it's a program that we created. Next question is from Pato F. Blanc. I hate crunches. What are some good choices for athletic and functional core exercises? So athletic and functional. You know what my favorite, one of my, hmm. my favorite types of core exercises for just function involve rotation. Yep. I think rotation is uh, one of the most functional athletic, I guess, movement patterns at the core, aside from stabilizing, right, that it's involved in. So cable chops, band chops, lots of different directions. Counter, uh, you know, counter rotation um, is really good for stabilization. So that's like where you have like a cable, arms close to your body, and then you pull yeah, it out this way. So Pale of press. Yeah. What's that yeah, called? Pale, pa pal or pale of press? Of it's press, one of the okay. two. But the um, yeah, I agree. It's really hard to program in rotation uh, for most exercises. Um, and it's, this is an area for core. I'm always like trying to make sure that this is going to be, um, an area where I'm going to add in rotational movements like cable chops, or I'm going to add yeah. in like, um, uh, landmine rotation, trunk rotations. Um, I'm going to do stuff with the medicine ball where I'm, I'm doing a side toss with the medicine ball, uh, to make sure I get some power in there as well as some core rotation. So, um, that's honestly for me, um, it, that's usually where I end up going for the most part for core to begin with. Cause I'm, I hate crunches as well, but I'll, I'll I'd rather do probably decline sit-ups or something like that where I can be I like a little those. more focused. I mean, I agree with you, Justin, and I'm like this person too. Like I'm not a big fan of um, Sal is by far the most, you know, the biggest cruncher in here. So uh, <laughs> very I'm, crunchy. Yeah. yeah. I, you know what? One, you didn't say that I really like doing um, it's less, uh, athletic per se, although I still think it has a tremendous athletic benefits. Um, cause that's uh, medicine tall ball toss to me is the, is I think we all agree rotational stuff for your yeah. core and abs is if you, for athletic endeavors is probably one of the best things you yeah. do medicine ball, uh, toss and or wood chops, I think are both great examples of that I really like, uh, what are what I enjoy because I don't like doing this, this type of stuff, um, was getting strong at windmills. Yeah, windmills are great. Mm, yeah. It, so, because it has an anti rotation component to it, that it has a regular rotation and strength component to it. Yeah, like, you have reaction. to get some stable, oblique, right? It's mostly uh, mostly QL, but that's all core stabilization. Yeah. 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 No, I mean, you still get, you start getting heavier and heavier and heavier. You'll definitely get oblique in there for yeah. sure. Yeah. No, you, you'll get, I mean, it's a, it's a, that's why I really, I did not do it thinking that I would get good core ab work. That was not my thought process when I was, went into getting good at the windmills. That was something that I found. I the benefits I got from it though was that. So I think that's a fun one to like, you know, get good at and, and add into. Yeah, your you know what's interesting when you look at people's core workouts, there's a over emphasis and over development on abs and a complete under under emphasis yes. on both the external and internal obliques. obliques. And here's fun. now it's all important. Okay, so I want to be clear: all the muscles that stabilize the core. And right now we're focusing on the front side of the core because there's also muscles that wrap around. Mm -hmm. And there's even the lats are involved in core stability to some extent. But let's just talk about the front. When people talk about core, they're talking about abs and obliques, right? In in athletic endeavors and for stabilization and protecting the spine, the internal and external obliques are arguably more important. Um, really, really effective athletes tend to have really well-developed obliques. Obliques are super important. When you look at most people's workouts, they involve an ab exercise and nothing for the obliques usually, or two or three ab exercises, and maybe one afterthought for the obliques. I think that's a mistake. I know why they do it. They do it that way because people think the obliques are on the side of the body. It's going to make my waist hella big. Not going to happen. You're lucky if you add a, a, you know, a fraction of an inch to the size of your waist because you've built your obliques. But now you've got these really nice looking strong obliques, which really add to the aesthetics of the body. So really, I, th I think if you're, if you're going to do a core workout and you're going to program it, I think you should have more of a two to one oblique to ab ratio with your exercises, not the other way around. That's just my personal belief, but I think there's much more function in having really strong, stable obliques than just having abs. Next question is from Live and Breathe. Do you believe in discipline or motivation? 
And what is your definition oh of each God. one? Of course, I, I feel like we've beat I don't up. Believe in anything? Do we, we believe in them? I mean, yeah, I, like you, this person, yeah. this person is. <laughs> exactly. No, I just think that this person's chimed in late because I mean, for the longest time, we used to shit all over the motivation right. stuff. I just think that's a. I mean, they, they exist in terms of it being overrated. Well, I mean, it's it's so heavy in our. So we came out early and talked a lot about all the hype. You know, the the beast mode, the all out, the videos with the music behind it. I mean, there's a reason why you don't see us do all that stuff. Get inspired. Yeah. Get motivated. First off, um, motivation, the feeling of motivation is intoxicating and it's amazing. And yeah, I've and never, it's fleeting. I've never had to, you know, talk a client into a workout. I've never had to convince a client to work out harder or to eat better when they were motivated. Yeah. A motivated client is a amazing client. They just do everything and they want to. And they're, in fact, you have to pull them away or pull them back from doing too much because that feeling is so amazing. So I understand why people rely on that feeling because when you do it, it's effort. When you're motivated, it's effortless. The the you just do all this great stuff for yourself because you're so motivated. But it goes away. It's it's it doesn't exist it's all the time. It's nitrous for an engine. It's nitrous for an engine. It's it's really nice. I mean, because I wouldn't I would not deny that. There's not moments where I'm like, oh man, I watch a you know workout video that gets me hyped and motivated to go to the gym. When you watch me and but, Justin work but, out, yeah. So, yeah. but what I what I what I'm very aware of what I'm doing it, how I'm using it, and I'm also very aware that I never want to rely on that to get me to do those things. Mm -hmm. And and that's why that's what you got to you got to build the engine. You got to through discipline and hard work and consistency and getting up when I don't want to do those things. Doesn't mean that I don't see value in getting yourself fired up and hyped up. The problem is is so many people rely on that and they need that in order to get them up to do things and then when that's not present or when a hard day comes or mm -hmm. a challenge happens which is inevitable, they fold. They fold like a lawn chair. They they, they don't have any sort of they don't have any sort of discipline that they've built in their life to, to get them through those moments. So yeah. that, that's my opinion on the whole motivation versus the discipline thing is that you absolutely need discipline to be successful in your life. In anything. Yeah. And you, yeah, in all pursuits, you build that first and then, okay, the motivation can be the nitrous on it that you, yeah. you add, you know, every, oh, man, I'm getting ready to get a workout and I want to, I want to push extra hard today. So I'm going to fire maybe up the some catalyst for you, right? Like yeah. maybe the motivation's the thing that sort of tips you over and then, um, but in order to sustain anything, you have to create and build these disciplines that'll carry you through all the, the times that you're not going to have that, that energy source, that motivation that just drives you like it did initially. It's just not going to be there. So what do you do on those days? You yeah. got to think about that. Yeah. Discipline is what, what gets you to do what you need to do every single day. Motivation, when it pops up, that's when you get breakthroughs. That's when you do new, you have new achievements faster than you could have before. So when motivation occurs, it's amazing. Grab onto it. Have a good time. When it goes away, what's left is discipline. Discipline is what's left over. And here's the, here's the kicker. Here's what's great about this. Discipline increases the amount of times you get motivated. Yeah, exactly. Okay? So if you like motivation- it Creates freedom. One of the best ways to get that feeling of motivation to occur more often is to be disciplined. Now, if you just wait for, for motivation and you act upon it and you love it and then it goes away and you stop, you're less likely, you're actually less likely to feel those periods of motivation. That's the irony of the whole thing. Well, I like how you said that it's, and I think it's important to, to point it out, is the- that it's intoxicating. And that's the part I think I don't it's like. It's one of my favorite, yeah. I, I, besides falling in love, can you think of a feeling that is that is more incredible than that extreme feeling of inspiration Just, and motivation? Oh, I'm charged yeah. to there's, go. There's nothing better than that. That's, that's why we love those movies and that's why we all gravitate to those Instagram pages and everyone yeah. follows them. It's but... I mean, you're you're falling into a trap if you if you use that stuff all the time to try to get yes. you to do now, things. Now, now here, now here's where it gets where it gets interesting, right? Why is motivation then so? Why do we revolve around it so much in the fitness, health, fat loss, wellness space? Why is motivation talked about? Why do we advertise to it? Why do we sell products around it? Well, here's why. It is easy as hell to sell you something when you're when I get when I make you feel that feeling of motivation. That's the bottom line. If I get somebody who wants to lose 40 pounds and then whatever, something happens, they get that spark of inspiration, that spark of motivation, and then they walk into my gym and I can sense it and I can feel it. Man, I could sell you anything. I can make you buy all the 
five, uh, five year membership, supplements, personal training, you know, access to all the gym, all that stuff. I could do that. So the fitness space, just like any market, knows the most effective way to sell you something is to give you that feeling of inspiration, that feeling of motivation, because you're you're going to act it gets, emotionally. It gets better than that. It gets better than that because we know, and this is why, I, why again, I don't like it, especially in our space, is this statistics show that 80% chance you're going to fail, especially if you don't have the real tools, especially if you don't get to the root cause of how you got there. That's right. And so if I am a company, a fitness company, and I use motivation to get you going, I know that you're, you're that eight out of 10 people are going to fail, and then you'll come right back to me again because you'll be motivated again. And I just keep making money off yes. of you, selling you bullshit, mm -hmm. and not ever really helping you get to the root cause of how did you get to this place, and then how do you now fix that? Instead, I just need to hype you up and get you excited. If I get you excited, then you're going to buy my supplement, you're going to buy my program, you're going to buy my thing, and you're going to do it, and then you're going to fall off, not do it again. You're going to be unmotivated. Then I'm going to hype you up again, and I'm going to say, it's just, it's a brilliant business model that the fitness space makes so much money yeah, it's, it's actually it's like 85 percent fail rate after a year yeah it's, it's that's ridiculous. why it's a brilliant model and that's yeah. why so many fitness people adopt it as a way of selling so you know it's interesting because this applies to everything it applies to workouts it applies to business it applies to, to relationships we often get asked how the hell you guys can all work four four of you guys are all kind of different how do you guys all work together and how have you guys been able to work together for so long i'll tell you right now motivation is like the feeling that you get when you really like someone and you want to hang out with them or you got that feeling of love with that that partner. Discipline is like uh, you're married. Look, I don't like we don't like each other right now, but we're going to do the work anyway because I value this relationship and this is lifelong, right? So how do we all get along? I'll tell you why. Because I love how disciplined you guys are. So, I mean, truth be told, I don't like you guys sometimes. I know you guys don't like me sometimes. Guess what we do? We show up to work. <laughs> And yeah. we do what we need to and do. We do it. And we respect each other over yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? Could totally. you imagine if this business was run off of motivation and liking everything? Uh, well, oh, I mean, man. come on. Adam yeah. and I would have broken up 15 times by now. <laughs> I know. So, it's, I mean. Yeah, it's just funny listening because you brought up relationships and the whole time I'm listening, I'm like, I had this really terrible analogy the whole time. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, did, no. I didn't launch it, but I was like, <laughs> literally like I motivation to me it was, is like being horny. <laughs> 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 disciplines are, are that's love yeah right <laughs> so it's oh my god i'm so hard. are you horny are you fitness? horny you need that horny don't ever hold your analogies in don't okay, ever right, don't ever right. hold your analogies. never again i'm you sorry have the best analogies <laughs> yeah. of all time. So just think about yeah, that if you guys. want long look if, here's the deal if you want long-term success in anything but especially in health and fitness build habits and build discipline and then when the motivation comes welcome it with open arms, enjoy it while it's there and be okay and accept the fact that it's going to be gone at some point. But what's left with you is a skill of discipline that nobody could take away from you. So stick with that. Motivation is bullshit. Self-belief is everything. That's it. Look, if you love the show, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our free stuff. We made a lot of free guides for uh, all of our listeners that can help them with all kinds of fitness and health goals. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. Adam is on Instagram at MindPumpAdam, and you can find me on Twitter at MindPumpSal. This one's really important, and that is to phase your training. If somebody trains for a full year doing a bench press, and they're always aiming for five reps, if you compared that person to a person who did bench press where they did three or four weeks of five reps, but then they did three or four weeks of 12 reps, and then three or four weeks of, let's say, 15 to 20 reps, and then they'll throw in some supersets, at the end of that year, you're going to see more consistent progress from the person who's moving in and out and less injuries.